In John 16 verse 20, Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, that ye shall weep and lament, but the world shall rejoice, and ye shall be sorrowful, but your sorrow shall be turned into joy. You will grieve, but your grief will suddenly turn to wonderful joy. How comforting is that? Jesus said your grief will suddenly turn to wonderful joy. So therefore I pray for you in Jesus' name. May your grief and sorrow suddenly turn to wonderful joy. And may all your pains turn to gains for you in Jesus' name. Before Jesus went to the cross, he used his last evening comforting his disciples. Why did he do that? It is because he knows that it's easier to endure a season of trial if there's an end in sight. So he spent time talking to his followers about the future. I want you to understand that at this point, he was just hours from the cross, but still he reassured his followers that the time of their suffering would come to an end. He reassured them that all their pains and sorrow would be replaced with joy. I don't know who this is for, but God is saying don't worry. Your problems and suffering is coming to an end, and you will rejoice and testify in Jesus' name. In every sense, Jesus was getting his disciples ready for what was about to happen. Although Jesus Christ encouraged his disciples, you will notice that he didn't sugarcoat what was about to happen. He made it clear to them that they were about to enter a time of suffering. In John 16 verse 33, Jesus said something. He said these things I have spoken to you that in me you may have peace. In the world, you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ contrasts what was coming to a woman giving birth. We all know the pains of labor are agonizing, but the truth is that it must be experienced. And as we all know, after a woman gives birth to a child, she is so joyful with the baby that she quickly forgets the suffering caused by the labor. John 16 verse 21 says, A woman when she is in travail has sorrow because her hour is come, but as soon as she is delivered of the child, she remembers no more the anguish for joy that a man is born into the world. In the same way, the disciples would experience intense grief, but when the reality of the risen Christ was manifested to them, their joy would be so intense that their suffering would seem minimal. Jesus said in John 16 verse 22, Therefore you now have sorrow, but I will see you again and your heart will rejoice, and your joy no one will take from you. I know you are going through so much in your life right now, but God will divinely visit you, and your heart will rejoice. If you believe it, shout Amen. Hallelujah. For us as believers, all our suffering has an expiration date. Yes, it has an expiration date. No matter how dark our days may seem right now, the Bible teaches us that all grief will come to an end and will be replaced with eternal peace and gladness. In other words, no condition is permanent. In the book of Revelation chapter 21 verse 4, Apostle John wrote and said, He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. Are you hurting right now? Does it feel endless? Does it feel hopeless? Does it feel like you are all alone and no one cares? If so, be reminded that Jesus brought an ending date for pain. He promised it would not last forever. Yes, that's right. It would not last forever. God is going to turn things around for you. Luke 1 verse 37 says, For with God nothing will be impossible. Yes, with God nothing will be impossible. And what God cannot do does not exist. Our God is strong and powerful, and he is able to do what seems or look impossible in your life. We may not be called to walk on water like Peter in Matthew 14, but we do walk through periods of tumultuous circumstances in life. Right now our world is battling the pandemic virus, and we are being tossed about in uncharted waters of a global shutdown. Every time we turn on the television or scroll through social media, we are inundated with a flood of bad news. 
If we focus on the swirling waves of difficulties surrounding us, we can easily feel like we are being swallowed up by the surge of life's problems. But in all of this, I want you to know that God is with you, and he will turn things around for your good. When you are afraid of the troubles that swirl around you, keep your eyes on Jesus' power rather than your own inadequacies. Call out to him for help, and he will rescue you from the stormy seas. In Psalm 50 verse 15, God says you should call upon him in the day of trouble, and he will deliver you, and you will glorify him. Oh yes, he will deliver you. We have to pray with our eyes on God and not on the difficulties. With God nothing is impossible. Though the struggles you face today may seem insurmountable in light of your own limitations and weaknesses, Please be reminded that the God of all possibilities is right beside you as an ever-present help. He is always there to help you and he will not let you down. All he wants from you is to trust him and stay connected to his limitless resources through each moment of the day. When anxiety occupies your thoughts and you feel overwhelmed, turn your attention away from the obstacles and difficulties and focus on God's capabilities rather than your inabilities. When troubles seem near, be reminded that God is nearer and he's ready to help you. Remember, he is able to do exceedingly and abundantly and more than you could ever imagine or request in your wildest dreams. Hallelujah. If your life's purposes and actions are aligned with God's will, I tell you, nothing can derail you. Nothing can stop you. In everything you do, listen to God's voice every moment of your day. Trust him to light up each step of your journey and to equip you to handle any problems that come your way. It's through your weaknesses that God displays his infinite strength. So his power working through you is an unstoppable combination. Hallelujah. You are unstoppable. Your breakthrough is unstoppable. Your victory is unstoppable. Your greatness is unstoppable. Your glorious future is unstoppable. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. So trust God from the bottom of your heart. And don't try to figure out everything on your own. Listen to God's voice in everything you do. And everywhere you find yourself. Because he's the one who will keep you on track. Remember what the word of God says in Psalm 30 verse 5. For his anger is but for a moment. His favor is for life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Hallelujah. Your joy is coming and you will testify in Jesus' name. So let us read Psalm 126 together. 1, 2, 3, go. When the Lord brought back the captivity of Zion, we were like those who dream. Then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. Then they said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are glad. Bring back our captivity, O Lord. As the streams in the south, those who sow in tears shall reap in joy. He who continually goes forth weeping, bearing seed for sowing, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. May the Lord manifest his word in your life in Jesus' name. Thank you for watching. I will see you again in my next video. Until then, stay blessed and lifted.